Hello, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today, I am going to discuss second principle of solid, which is open close principle. And I will try to make it super simple for you to understand this principle. Okay. And this session is for beginners. Okay. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So I have already created one video in that I have consolidated all these principles and explained in short, but in this session, I will explain in detail. Okay, so let's move ahead for open close principle. So what is the golden rule of open close principle? So that says a class should be open for extension, but close for modification. Okay, so what do we mean by this? It means we can extend the behavior of a system without having to modify that system. So you can think about that something is already deleted, but you don't want to modify the existing behavior or existing system. But at the same time, you also want to extend the functionality of that. Okay, but what will happen? A small change in the functionality is carried out by modifying the class itself. Although that might work in simple application, but there is always a risk, right? You will agree with me on this. When you change a class, it is possible that the change may adversely affect some other parts of the system. And this requires retesting of the class, right? Even the functionality, the core thing we are updating. So that is why a retesting will always required, right? So wouldn't it be nice if we could add functionality without touching the class that has already been tested and is working as expected. Yes. So that is what OCP or open close principle is about. Okay. So a module will be said to be open if it is available for extension. It means we can extend the functionality. For example, it should be possible to add a new element to the set of function it performs. Okay, don't worry. I will explain with example after a few seconds, but just to understand what do we mean by open here, right? And a module the set to be closed a module I am saying a module can be a feature functionality or I mean this is the, this is the convention that I am using. So a module will set to be closed if it is available for use by other modules, right? Others can use, but they cannot modify it, right? Or in programming language, a closed module is one that may be compiled and stored in a library. Or maybe we can say we just published that as an interface for others, or maybe other can also get benefit of that. Maybe it is a generic common uh, business approved design that we put it in a common repository and every other programmer or every other team member can use the same without altering the main behavior, right? So in that case, it is very useful. Okay. So let's take an example, a very simple one. So this is again a, a uniform markup language uh, a convention. So this is our class name text calculator and this is our public method which is calculate and it contains three input parameters income deduction and country. So what will, what will happen if you want to calculate the tax, right? So definitely according to the country, every country has its own tax calculation uh, condition or parameter, right? So it cannot be same for every country. So what very first solution that will come in your mind is if we can apply a simple switch statement, then check the country of the user and depend on the country, a tax will be calculated, right? But there is a catch when you will simply going to implement this. So you can have a switch in that you can pass country as a top main first filter. And then after on the basis of country, you can apply the tax calculation formula, right? It may be USA, it may be UK or India, right? This switch statement is good when you are dealing with a small set of countries. But for example, you want to expand your business throughout the globe. 
means you want to deal with more and more countries in that case this solution will not work and there can be a other OCP comfortable approach as well right which confirm to yes this design is completely acceptable and it follows the OCP convention so what that be you can see again we will be having a one class which is text calculator and in that we will be having one method which is calculate obj which is our object that we will pass and separately we will have an interface which is i country text calculator in that we will be having two properties plus symbol indicates those gonna be public and one public method which is calculate text amount right and you can see this interface will be implemented by text calculator for us for uk and for india right so once this is implemented by all these three child classes okay so what we need to do in this text calculator class we just need to pass the type of the these classes and accordingly a text will be calculated right i will explain in detail so don't worry so till this point what we understood in the second solution in by interface we create the child class object these are the child classes text calculation for us uk and for india and assigned to parent what is the parent here so i country text calculator is the parent i hope till now you are with me and you understood everything whatever i explain right okay now let's move ahead so so how our solution will look like so the interface that i was talking about that will look like this there will be i country text calculator it contains three properties total income total deduction and calculate tax amount and how its implementation will look like for us definitely here we can see we are calculating 30 percent on taxable income correct and for UK, it is 35%. For India, it is 20%, right? So we are doing nothing at till this point. We are implementing this I country tax calculator interface and providing the calculate tax amount according to the country. Okay. Now the, here will be our main class, which is tax calculator, right? In that we will write one method, which is calculate and what it is expecting to receive a object of type i country text calculator okay so here what we are doing by using this object we are calling the calculate tax amount which is here which is which is available in all the three child classes so it completely depends on the type of object we are passing so how the call will look like so generally we will create a object of the class that we want to pass I mean the kind of object we want to pass for example here we are taking an example of text calculator for us okay so by using this object first we need this second we will create an object of this calculator class so we can call this calculate method okay so this is text calculator this is object name text calculator a new of text calculator right and in the third line what we are doing by using this text calculator we are calling the calculate method which is actually this one and what we are passing i country text calculator right and we will simply get the amount that we are expecting to receive on the basis of the country wise so you see how we just materialize this design and conform to the ocp principle so this is the this is the class that we are saying for example if we want to again calculate for one more region for example us uk india for example i also want to calculate the tax for europe so i can add one more implementation of this i country tax calculator for europe and in the same way i will just pass it am i making any changes in this tax calculator class no am i making any changes in this calculate method no it completely depends on the type of object that we are passing right so there is a one important note i you will take care of this if we want to extend the behavior of the calculate function to calculate a new country tax so all we need to do is add a new derivative of the i country tax calculator correct and the calculate function 
does not need to change correct and the calculate conforms to OCP as well it means its behavior can be extended right but without modifying it right I hope till this point everything is clear I just try to make it super simple for you okay now there are few more points that I want to add on this in my previously explained session I explained with the help of abstract classes like in current session I explained with the help of interfaces so by using abstract class as a base class for most common abstract feature we can use and use the separate classes for different implementation of abstract method if you recall from my previous session that where I explained all the principle so this is our class cell calculator and this is normally calculating for an employee report but if you want to calculate for senior developer junior developer so we just implement this uh, base cell calculator class that we created new and just implement its implementation right so i mean if you want to see in more detail then the link of that video is given in the description and if any of the basic concepts is not clear for you i also drop the link of those videos where I have explained OOPS principle in um, object oriented programming and object oriented concepts as well. I strongly recommend you to go for it. So you can accomplish this by abstracting the class design using either interfaces or inheritance with the help of classes and interfaces. Right. So finally what are the advantages there are many that we have seen like it it follows the single responsibility means if you are following the open close principle in generally you will not violate the single responsibility principle it is flexible we can add new features it is reusable we are using the same class and adding more features to it it is maintainable it is easy for testing we can write unit test cases very easily and this solution is not rigid and it is not fragile it is a robust solution right and there is very less chance of error in this approach and the again biggest one is if your solution is supposed to be a plugin architecture where uh, when your fundamental business rules are the core of a plugin architecture then you are never bound to a particular feature set or interface or database or framework or anything else so there as well this open close principle is very useful so again there is a note now everything is positive so far right but conforming to OCP is expensive yes it is it takes development time and effort to create the appropriate abstraction so those abstraction also increase a bit of complexity of the software design I hope everything is clear for you now if you have any question any suggestion you can leave into the comment box and I strongly wait for your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos so I will see you in the next video where we will explain the third principle which is the scope okay till then bye bye